Star Wars Outlaws is coming out on August 30th, and we finally have the PC system requirements. And it's a pretty good requirements list broken down in a lot of detail, unlike some other games out there. So that's good at least. So if you want to be jumping into the latest Star Wars game on August 30th when that launches, what do you need? Well, the minimum system requirements aren't too crazy. Although there's some interesting GPU choices. We'll talk about that in a second. Looks like my hair is sticking out a little bit in the back there. Anyway, you guys don't care about that. Uh, anyway, uh, we've also got recommended high and ultra requirements. So there's a lot of details to go through here. A couple of nice things on this chart is they actually do specify the resolution and graphic settings that they're targeting with this hardware recommendation. Now, whether it ends up being accurate is a whole other question, but uh, you know, we'll find out when the game launches. Let me know if you guys are interested in me benchmarking it on the channel. Anyway, so to just play the game, I just wanna play the game. I don't care if it's 1080p 30 frames per second and not actually at 1080p because we're using uh, an upscaler set to quality, which so for most upscalers like FSR and DLSS, that would equate to a 720p internal rendering resolution and then trying to upscale the game from there. And at the low graphics preset, it's looking like you're gonna need a graphics card like a GTX 1660 with six gigabytes of VRAM or an AMD RX 5600 XT with six gigabytes of VRAM or the Intel Arc A750 that comes with eight gigabytes of VRAM. The fact that they're specifying these VRAM amounts tells me that it, uh, you know, the base levels of, you know, textures and settings and whatever in the game may end up having trouble running uh, below this VRAM amount, but we can't guarantee that. Uh, another interesting thing going on here is that these graphics cards actually have a pretty wide variance in their just generally expected power level. Here's what I mean. This will be a helpful tool that I'll try to remember to link in the video description. This is over at techpowerup.com. Uh, they have a relative performance chart for their GPU t uh, uh, lists and, and database where you can find most graphics cards, including your own. Because I know a lot of people who look at these system requirements lists uh, are like, well, I know what graphics card I have, but mine isn't listed on this chart. So how, where do I fall into that? Well, that's where this can be helpful. Although keep in mind that this is a general relative performance and can be very different on a game to game basis. So just, you know, take it for what it is, but it gives you a rough ballpark idea of where your graphics card might fall, uh, you know, relative to these. So a GTX 1660, uh, if we compare that to something like the uh, the AMD GPU they listed, which was the RX 5600 XT, the 5600 XT is generally expected, according to this chart, to be a little over 30% faster than that GTX 1660, which gives you a wide range of graphics cards that kind of fall into this ballpark. But again, I think that can still make sense because when they say 1080p 30 FPS in system requirements lists, they're not generally saying we benchmark this and average exactly 30. They usually are either saying 30 or 60. And in reality, what 30 means is you're not averaging 60. So you'll be somewhere in between and the weaker cards on this list, maybe they're gonna be closer to that 30 FPS average. Whereas the stronger ones are maybe gonna be, you know, 35 or 40 FPS average, but you're still not gonna be hitting that 60. And system requirements charts for whatever reason still do tend to be either they say 30 or they say 60, but what they're kind of saying is, you know, if, if, if we don't list it as, as 60, it's not, it's not gonna be averaging 60, but it doesn't mean it's actually exactly 30, if that makes any sense. Now, the other GPU listed here is the Intel Arc A750, which if we uh, continue scrolling through this chart, uh, notice is generally about 62% faster uh, than a GTX 1660. So that's a pretty wide variance. However, Intel Arc GPUs also just tend to have a lot of variance in performance on a game to game basis. Some games they can really overperform and put up a good show, and some games they tend to underperform, and that certainly could be the case here. So anyway, that's the GPUs you're looking at as far as just getting in the game uh, to play it at the lowest settings, upscaled at 1080p resolution. And again, pretty wide variance there on performance. I noticed the other uh, charts that we'll look at here for the other graphic settings uh, had a little less variance there. This could also indicate it's just the lowest end chip that they tested and verified the game runs at. 
uh, from these systems. Uh, and, and you know, it, it's also possible, again, that they just weren't hitting 60, so they're calling it 30. And they're just verifying that the game is playable at these settings uh, on this hardware. Uh, we can also take a look at the RAM. They are specifying 16 gigabytes of, of RAM in dual channel mode. So if you're still on an eight gigabyte system or something like that, you could be running into issues. And 65 gigabytes of not just storage space, but notice they do specify an SSD. A lot of times games that say SSD could still run on a hard drive. They're not gonna stop you from trying, but it could have more streaming issues and, and, and um, occasionally stutters. And it, it can cause problems if the game is really designed around an SSD. Uh, so do keep that in mind if you're on an older system. And then also the CPUs listed here are a Ryzen 5 3600 and an Intel Core i7-8700K. Again, if you're not quite sure what those are or what those mean, uh, we could pop up some additional details. So a Ryzen 5 3600 is a six core 12 thread CPU uh, from AMD that came out in July of 2019. So we're talking about five years old mid-range uh, CPU from AMD should get the job done. And if we look at the i7-8700K, this is also a six core 12 thread part. Um, and this one was from, uh, where's our launch year? About 2017 on this one. So it's looking like if you have somewhat reasonably modern CPUs, you should be okay. But when I say okay, Again, keep in mind that this is targeting 30 frames per second. And oftentimes, especially if you get into more complicated environments uh, with, with a lot of NPCs and things like that, in a lot of games, you can actually become more CPU limited. Um, so so uh, don't necessarily assume that'll be a 60 FPS experience. So what if we did want a 60 FPS experience? Well, if we move up to the recommended settings here, uh, they're now listing 1080p 60 frames per second requirements, but they're also moving up to the high graphics preset, and they're still setting the upscaler to quality, so actually the rendering resolution would most likely be t uh, 720p, again, if we're talking FSR or DLSS. In, uh, uh, Intel's XESS latest version uses its own kind of um, upscaling resolutions. With uh, they, they messed up the naming scheme, but anyway. So we're talking below 1080p rendering resolution here, but at high graphic settings and hitting 60 FPS. Notice the CPUs also move up here. So to get that 60 FPS experience, it's possible you'll need a newer CPU. Uh, and now they're saying the Ryzen 5 5600X or the i5-10400. And there was a pretty big jump in gaming performance from the 3600 uh, to the 5600 uh, generations from AMD. Uh, the 5600X CPU is six core 12 thread still, uh, but again, it is a newer generation, this one coming out in uh, November of 2020. And the 10400 from Intel is also six core 12 threads and coming in in uh, April of 2020. So we're moving up to about four year old uh, mid-range CPUs in order to get that 60 FPS experience. And uh, as far as graphics cards go, there's now no Intel card listed, so it's possible that uh, even the strongest ARC GPUs are not capable of 1080p 60 at high settings, even with upscaler set to quality. Uh, we're also moving into a 3060 Ti or a 6700XT, so a pretty big jump in graphics performance. And well, they are listing both an eight gigabyte card and a 12 gigabyte card as being good for these settings. So it's looking like at least at 1080p resolution, upscaled at high settings, eight gigabytes of VRAM should be sufficient. The 3060 Ti and the 6700 XT can also be fairly close in performance. Uh, but let's look at where are you falling? So if you were on that 1660, you know, there you were, that was the low settings, 30 FPS. And, and as we scroll up again, you might spot your graphics card. Maybe you're on a 1070, that kind of thing. As we scroll up, you know, here's your 2060, RX 6600. We're going quite a ways before we jump into this uh, 3060 Ti kind of territory. It's a 200% uh, of the performance of the GTX 1660. So in other words, uh, a doubling of performance, and we are moving from 30 FPS to 60 FPS, and they're increasing graphic settings from low to high. So actually that would be pretty consistent, um, you know, if you're gonna go from 30 to 60, and especially if it wasn't exactly 30, if you were getting like 40, and then now you're getting 60, and you're moving up graphic settings, that seems like a pretty reasonable um, jump uh, as far as consistency in these system requirements. The 3060 Ti, again, is an eight gigabyte graphics card, came out in uh, 2020. 
and uh, the 6700 XT is fairly close in performance, usually a bit faster if we're not using ray tracing and a bit slower if you're using ray tracing. Now, if you don't have these two cards, but you have something else on this list, again, this seems pretty close to what you'd get from a 4060. That's not too much slower than a 3060 Ti. Kind of sad that it is generally a bit slower than a 3060 Ti. Uh, we're all also, um, you know, if you're on something like a uh, 3070, you're a bit stronger than this, but, but still kind of in that same general bar ballpark. Uh, newer cards like a 7600 XT, uh, older cards like a 2080, RX 7600. Uh, these are all kind of in this general ballpark. Notice the ARC A770 is kind of performing a bit lower, and the, that ARC A750 seemed to be listed with pretty lower class um, GPUs than would be considered normal. So again, I'm wondering if that indicates this is not well optimized for Intel ARC. Uh, but let's go ahead and move up to the higher settings. So at high settings, notice that they're now targeting 1440p resolution at the high graphics preset with the upscaler set to quality and at 60 FPS. So basically the difference between what we just looked at with recommended and what we're looking at now with high is the difference between moving from 1440p out, uh, sorry, from 1080p output to 1440p output, still using quality level upscaling, which at 1440p, I believe quality level upscaling is a 960p internal rendering resolution for FSR and DLSS. Um, uh, but then again, you know, it reconstructs a 1440p like output image, and I'm much happier using quality level upscaling at 1440p than I am at the 1080p results that they were giving us earlier, although it would be nice to see native resolution system specs. But anyway. Uh, here we are, so it's looking like now you're going to want to move up to a, an RTX 3080 or an RTX 4070 if you're on uh, NVIDIA hardware. Now this is interesting because they are specifying the 3080 10 gigabyte should be fine, uh, indicating that you, uh, we don't know if, you know, 8 gigabytes of VRAM would be fine, but they seem to be indicating that 10 gigabytes of VRAM will be fine. The 4070 has 12, but it looks like you wouldn't actually need that since the 10 gigabyte card is also listed. And the AMD card listed is the 6800 XT. And all of these cards are fairly close in performance generally. Uh, so if we take a look at our uh, relative performance chart, so moving from the 1080p high with quality level upscaling with the 3060 Ti, if we now scroll down again, you might spot your card somewhere in here. We're, the, the 4070 6800 XT and the RTX 3080 are, are the GPUs now being listed for if you want to move to that 1440p result. And notice that they're asking for basically 40 to 50% more performance from the graphics card to move up resolution from 1080p to 1440p, which again actually sounds fairly reasonable expectations wise. And again, the 4070 6800 XT uh, and the 3080 10 gigabyte are all of within 10% of performance of, e of each other in most games. Uh, obviously, some games can differ, uh, but that's what we're looking at there. Now, uh, as far as CPUs go, they are also now asking for a bit more, uh, going up to a 5800X from AMD, so staying at the same uh, generation of processor, but moving up to an 8-core processor. Now that's a bit odd because we're targeting the same frame rate and generally increasing, and graphic settings, and generally increasing resolution does not put additional burden on the CPU. So I'm not sure this would actually be needed if you were actually getting 60 FPS on the 5600X. So sometimes system requirements charts, I notice move up the CPU requirements along with the GPU requirements when they're not changing settings that would generally require that. They could just be indicating that you'd get a smoother experience this way, or they could be indicating um, that uh, this is just what was in their test systems and they just had a higher end test platform and weren't just swapping out GPUs or something like that. Uh, the Intel uh, 11600 uh, k is a six core 12 thread part still, uh, but this one is a, a bit newer. This one came out in 2021, but again, there wasn't that much of a performance bump, if any, going from the 10th to 11th series of Intel's uh, chips. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's what they're specifying here. So again, I'm not quite sure that would actually really be needed if you would have been fine on the other ones. But let's move up to the highest end specs that they've listed for us. If you want to play at 4K resolution on your monitor, although you're rendering internally at 1440p because you're using uh, quality level upscaling, 
This is now, uh, again, targeting 60 FPS, and we're now moving up to the Ultra Graphics preset. So in this case, we're not just moving up resolution from 1440p to 4K, but we're also moving up from the high settings to the ultra settings uh, on the graphics. Uh, they're now asking for an RTX 4080 or an RX 7900 XTX, and these generally do perform similarly. Uh, when you're not using heavy, heavy, heavy ray tracing settings. So that, again, that pairing seems reasonable. And if we go ahead and check out our system requirement chart, when we move from the RTX 4070 and then scroll through here, again, you might spot your GPU and kind of where it falls in between all of this. Uh, if we're moving up to the RTX 4080, uh, we'd be looking at like a 58% performance bump. The 7900 XTX is listed as 62% performance bump. So again, if we click on the and click on the 4080 and look at the XTX here, again the XTX is generally a few percent faster in non-ray tracing performance, but it's nothing um, uh, crazy. So these are paired up, uh, I think, fairly well here. But again, we're talking extremely expensive high-end parts here. But that's if you're trying to play one of the latest AAA graphic, uh, you know, graphically demanding games on a 4K screen. Uh, and again, that is using quality level upscaling. So if you wanted to avoid upscaling at all, you know, maybe a 4090 will get there, but honestly, even a 4090 doesn't always hold 60 FPS at 4K max settings uh, without using upscaling in the latest AAA games. So that is what it is. Uh, and the CPUs they're asking for now, now they're moving up to 5800X3D and an Intel Core i7-12700K. Now again, this could indicate that they're just using a higher end test platform and they're just listing those CPUs as what they tested the, this high end spec on. Uh, it's also, I guess, possible that something moving from the high settings to the ultra settings would need additional CPU power. But again, usually moving up rendering resolution doesn't place much, if any, increased burden on the CPUs. So again, it does seem a bit odd to me that they're now asking for more powerful CPUs to still reach a 60 FPS target. Generally, a CPU is good for a certain frame rate, uh, regardless of the resolution. Although certain graphic settings, like I said, sometimes can put additional burden on the CPU, especially things like ray tracing and, and stuff like that often do put additional burden on the CPU. So maybe the ultra settings are doing something along those lines. Who knows? Uh, the 5800X uh, X3D gets you the 3D V cache and your ultimate gaming performance from AMD's AM4 platform. Uh, which all uh, th this actually gives you uh, similar performance to some of the non X three D seven thousand series gaming chips uh, from AMD. This was an April twentieth, twenty twenty two part, and the twelve seven hundred K from Intel uh, moves up to a twelve core twenty thread part. Although not all of those are performance cores. I think we only had eight actual performance cores that you would want to be using while gaming. Uh, and this is a 2021 part there. So, all right, we now have all of the system specs in detail. Like I said, I'll uh, link you this uh, relative performance chart to help you out in the, in the uh, uh, video description so that you can kind of figure out where your GPU falls in between. And just heads up that sometimes system requirements end up being nonsense. So if this is a game you'd like me to benchmark when it comes out and see how it actually performs, let me know in the comments section. And again, I believe the game comes out on August 30th, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.